I kind of like this format that we have going right now where it's sort of like once a week we have some content on the Red Deer Grind. Because I feel like that's a good balance of not having too much content where it kind of gets repetitive. But also having enough to kind of continue to update the progress on the grind. And as of now, we're approaching 3400 stag kills in. Still no great one. And I think since the last video, maybe no more diamonds. In fact, I'm certain the last diamond that we took was over a week ago. So it's been a little bit slow in terms of trophy stags. But at least we're still going. And again, doesn't matter how many diamonds we get. All we need is that end result of a great one showing up. So one stag down, a level five, and I felt like that shot was a bit far back. Barely got into a lung and liver. And again, as per usual, we'll kind of stick to only including some of the either maybe potential gold level sixes and then anything above level six uh, will stay into the video. And most of the smaller stags will kind of cut out. Again, it pretty much just keeps the video from being like 30 minutes long. But this is once again going to be one spot that we simply have to include because I mentioned it in the last video, it essentially becomes almost like a self-drive. By fast traveling to this tent up here in front of us, all the red deer that are in the zone in that area always run right past our tripod. So what we need to do to ensure that they actually run is get within really 400 meters. I like to get within about 370 just to ensure that I'm not too far away. And then, for whatever reason, because they've been rendered and because we fast travel here, they always run in front of us. So we'll get our M102 75, and well, there we go. I thought for a second there maybe it wasn't going to happen, but they must have been a little further in, a little more distance to run to actually get past us. Now we have two stags as per usual. That one we did not hit as well, I think, for either of those few more rounds than I wanted to hit that one with, but I think especially when it's a level 6, it's easier to just get those shots in them and bring them down and save the tracking, because it allows us to be a little more efficient. And again, a couple of lackluster stags, they would have all been silvers if we made better shots on the 6, and now we can kind of get on to, as I mentioned, mostly looking for the, the better ones. I think actually on some past runs, I probably would not include a level 7 like this, because there was a time when I would just basically include any max weight estimate stag, and while most 7s are, this guy's gonna be in that like 209 kg range and be just below that 210 to 240 estimate, but especially the way things have gone thus far, we've made it all around this lake that is the last zone, and there's been no big ones, like 5s and 6s all the way around, and not even 6s with the rack that can potentially make gold, and I think sometime soon it may be time to like run this entire river again, check some of the lakes where, like I know Red Deer can spawn but I haven't seen them this entire run. I just get the feeling that something's up, maybe there's there's Red Deer that have moved or something because I think it's rare to go that long without seeing even a 7, but at least there was one here at the end, I mean I think the only gold at this lake we kind of just started off with a couple of silvers to get things going. And if there is a silver lining to go along with him, gold at 186, we were able to get another stag in there as well, and just kind of continue to raise our total number of stags down for this grind. And by the end of this hunt, we will have topped the 3400 mark. Kind of an interesting looking level 6 to go along with him. Bit of a weird rack, but got that one down as well. We can at least move on to the next lake. Well... It is another 7, another one that should make gold, but once again in that lower weight tier, we don't see a whole lot of those. At least it's a different rack in some variety that way. Got the long shot and he'll go down as well, so we're going to fast travel over to that side just to make the recovery process easier. And maybe that means things are starting to heat up back to back, I think 186 scoring stags. If that's the case, and I forget if that's exactly what it was. It's so interesting to see like the amount of mass on this stag's rack compared to the other seven. For them to score basically the same is just crazy to me. But the way that red deer are scored is rather odd. Things are looking up. We have a max weight estimate level seven this time, along with a six, I think that said, up there to his right. They may be far enough apart that the six won't spook from this shot. We'll still try to get over to him quickly. It says Colin, but he was going to move, so we'll go ahead and hit him and bring him down. 
And now we actually get to fast travel back to where we started. So one uninteresting level six. And then down here somewhere is gonna be our seven. I'm not sure. Oh, it's actually laying right there. I'm not gonna even have to track it. But it is nice to see things are looking up a little bit now as we've started to kind of rack up a couple of big ones. This is one of my absolute favorite racks in this game. I wish it could be a diamond. Like, it just looks like they could have made that the top tier for Red Dude, but they get, obviously, a whole lot bigger. And speaking of diamonds, as I said, we're in the area of 400 kills since our last one. And along this grind, despite the fact there have been no level 9s for that long, there has actually been a few things to keep it interesting. Sometimes it just works out perfectly where a potential trophy red deer shows up at the end of a run and it allows us to bring a different weapon and try to go for it that way. So for this little piebald red deer, we have the 44 gaucho from the parquet missions. And actually, I think I may have forgotten to throw the scope on there, so we'll go ahead and get that. And we're going to have to scoot in a little bit closer, but go figure. I think this is rare number eight or nine. We have yet to get a gold, and obviously at level five, this guy is not going to be a gold either. Now we're starting to kind of get him attentive, but there's one really important thing that I want to pay attention here, and I don't think it's an intended thing, and I think it's something that, if it exists, should be fixed. Recently in the community, it's kind of been noticed that rare antlered animals in particular basically always score right at the top of their score estimate. So at 82 to 128, this guy should in theory score 128 point something if that is correct. So we're getting into about 100. I think at 100 I'll be confident enough going for that shot. And I'm hoping to just kind of hard shot and drop him at that quartering angle. So we'll go ahead and get ready. We'll zero for 75. And basically once he lifts his head, we'll just stop and try that shot. Gonna give us a opportunity. And either we shot too low or we got out to his side. Where did he go? We got along. I saw the health drop, but he, he cannonballed into the water. Now we saw this with a black bear on Silver Ridge Peaks. And what happened was it actually like respawned up on the shore. I, because it's so steep over there, I wouldn't be shocked if he's, like, way up high. Well, kind of, you know, part of my whole thought process here was to investigate a little bit of the scoring of Drex antlered rares. Now we gotta investigate where the heck he went. I think the first thing to try is just to set Sir 12 on the track. And he is, well, well he was, level 1 at track, and that got him to level 2. I actually haven't had him track a single thing since we got him. But I want to see if he's going to be able to recover it. Oh, I never saw him go up this way. Or maybe he didn't actually go up this way. It's possible that he did. But I wouldn't be shocked at all if this is like a... Almost a, a teleportation set of tracks. I remember that happening with something in the past. But luckily, we can see his laying right there. Sir 12's first successful track will be a piebald red deer. And we're not losing that one even with the... Not so ideal shot. I want to see where that actually hit. Go ahead and praise search well for that. And a couple of things to look for. 128 is the score we expect to see. And he is right on the nose. 128. And actually, just too far right. Lung liver with that shot from the 44. Not too bad. Had he been just facing us directly, we probably would have been fine. But I guess that quartering angle was a little tougher maybe with less zoom. So we'll tax that. Interesting to see though that 128 come up again and like I said rare number nine somewhere in there Silver rare number nine uh, as well. So kind of unfortunate, but kind of just the way it's gone and we'll go ahead and Kind of thanks for 12 for the help Between actually finding the small piebald and just feeling like we're still making some progress on this grind and also getting to switch it up and use the 44 and gaucho It was just nice to kind of do something a little bit different and again, just, you know, we get to see at least we're still getting something to spawn, even if it's not the level 9s or ultimately the level 10 that we're after. Finally starting to see something a little bit better, a mythical this time. And with that rack that you could at least kind of confuse for being the small diamond rack, but 
No such luck in terms of that. We'll see if he's maybe going to stop in that opening. That is rather kind of him. And we'll just go for a long shot and not have to worry about trying to make a hard shot at that kind of range. So we've kind of moved into the smaller lakes in the southeast. And the good news is we've gotten stags at every single lake we've visited. It's just kind of been those lackluster, basically guaranteed silver uh, stags thus far. But nice to break that trend with a mythical. I wouldn't call it the best landing. I mean, that one antler is pretty well entirely concealed in the brush, but he's just a mythical and a 221. Not too bad, and our best stag thus far, anyway. I am quite glad to see, though, there have been more big stags on this run than I thought there were going to be. Because a lot of times, and most of these runs aren't recorded, but a lot of times we'll get runs where there just are no mythicals. Like, there's maybe a few sevens, but... Primarily, it ends up being a bunch of low score red deer, so to start the way that we did, I was kind of concerned that we weren't going to have much of anything, but that's now maybe our third or fourth max estimate uh, red deer, and I think it's going to be our fifth or sixth gold too. I think it is the first time as well that we've seen this particular rack, which is kind of odd because the amount of decent sevens we've seen, that's kind of a rarity, but... It's nice again to, to kind of have the variety of just not seeing the same thing over and over. That is a rack combination that I don't know if I've ever seen. So it's got that kind of rack that you can get the 7s, 8s, or small 9s with. And they all do have their little variations. That's his right side. The left side is that one that I said that I quite like. And I don't know that I've ever seen them together. It ends up looking a lot narrower. For just a second, I wanted to believe when I saw him kind of walking away that maybe that was our great one, but no luck with that. I mean, it's just that kind of difference. You don't normally see that for a Red Deer Stag. It really did make me believe for a second that we might be finally done, but a 201 gold, just a weird looking stag. And again, the bright side is another max wood estimate one down. We don't usually have to go over here on the bridge to try to shoot these red deer, but this level 7 actually was kind of perfectly lined up behind the tree over here to where we couldn't get a shot at him. So we're going to take him from the bridge. There actually are three. There's the two that are side by side here, and then another one kind of down in the trees to the right. So we'll see if he comes out. I figure since we dropped the follow-up shot one, that is our 7. He's going to go down from that shot. A little slower than I would have thought, so I'm not sure where we hit him. That is the other one then, so we'll see if we can get a shot through there just to bring him down. That actually felt good. It was the last second just kind of adjusting our shot angle, and that's going to bring all three down. And of course, even if there is a fourth, I don't want to delete the zone. I like having it right here by the bridge where we can have our tent placement and easily get to them. Unless they hide in the trees and we have to go across the bridge, of course. I'm pretty proud of that, though. The way that we were able to bring them all down. That was a right long on that guy, just high of a drop shot there. A little level 6 would have been a hard shot. And then just the fact that we were able to get that quick shot in there on the other 6 that was fleeing. And not have to end up tracking him for, you know, really far. That or just wasting a bunch of ammo. Sometimes that's kind of the solution on these smaller ones, but in that case it wasn't necessary. Now we're crunched for time, but I think we're just going to be able to make it to our last 2 spot. We gotta get to this lake here in the far west, and then this little lake in Kalina Rota, where we shot the Pieball Level 5. And as we're arriving at our last lake, I don't see any red deer whatsoever. But you guys have seen the title and the thumbnail already. This lake was, once again, the site of another pretty cool red deer kill. We've been on this really tough stretch of more than 400 stags since our last diamond. There was that little piebald level 5 here at the lake in Kalina Rota, and now it finally becomes worth it, having all these stags with nothing, with a mythical piebald out there. Our second mythical piebald ever on Quattro, and actually, it may be past 9 o'clock. Yeah, it's 9 or 7, he's kind of on his way there. Now, you may have noticed, he is not even, but he's not the ugliest kind of uneven red deer I've seen, so what we're going to do... Is kind of shoot out there ahead of him. He's around 300 away. See if we can maybe get him in the heart when he stops. Would have been a tough heart shot to make. It's definitely going to be into the lungs, though. 
and that's going to bring down our first gold rare of this grind. I am intrigued though to go up there and get a look at, you know, what he looks like kind of up close. Now our other mythical piebald was uh, uneven as well, but it was uneven in a way that actually, like the antlers match. I think they were designed to go together. These ones I'm not as sure about, but man, I mean, this is rare number 10, I think, from the grind, and finally one that's bigger than a level 6. And at 80 is a guaranteed gold. It'll be interesting to see what he scores, and also, going back to what we talked about with the pie, I think he should be 216, actually. Because that was the top of his estimate, assuming that it continues to go that way. It's funny that it worked out that way, though. I mean, the same lake as being like the only one that's produced anything? I don't know. Maybe that's not that bad. We'll have to, to get a better look in the trophy lodge. One thing that we will do is go ahead and get a screenshot here. I wish he had fallen the other way because the sun's kind of at his back, but at least it kind of lights up the back of the antlers there and has like a nice kind of glowy look to it. So he is a 216, right on 216 in fact. Left lung there, just a little bit right of a heart shot and I don't know, you can almost imagine a way in which like an injury or kind of like maybe knocking the antler into velvet could get it to grow like this. It's far from the worst I've seen. I've seen some really unfortunately ugly rare like mythicals or level sevens. We'll definitely throw that in the trophy lodge for our, uh, our grind lodge. I don't know, like I said, I think our other mythical piebald is a little higher scoring and definitely better looking. But it may be one that eventually makes its way to the main lodge anyway. I mean, you just don't see a lot of rares this big. So yeah, go figure. The only two good red deer uh, that have spawned in the last, you know, give or take 450 harvests, have been piebald stags at this particular lake. And it was nice to get a gold one finally after all the ones that we've been through. But yeah, after yet another run, I do think, as I said at the beginning, it's probably time to go and check maybe the river. This area I do check every now and then. This lake I need to check more and just, you know, kind of run around and see if there's a diamond or, or just something waiting on us because it just feels off compared to what we've seen throughout the entire grind. But anyway, we're going to go back to our Red Deer Lodge. Two new rares to place in there today. So I didn't intend for this to happen. I just wanted to put the mythical face in this way so you couldn't tell as much that it's uneven. But I love how it's looking at this little albino, just like, you're pathetic. But anyway, we've got our other uh, piebald here that we shot with the 44. And yeah, I don't know, he, he is rather uneven still in the lodge. So we'll have to see what we do with him in the end, but for the moment, I like that. That looks pretty hilarious. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.